Jane Leung, iShares is getting into the hedged country currency ETF business in a big way. You launched 11 recently from Italy to Australia to Korea. So is demand that deep for these products? Great. The demand is really there. We've seen $6.7 billion in flows year to date across the five currency hedge products that we had before the recent launch. And you know that's really because investors are waking up to the fact that there is currency risk in their portfolio and they're looking to do something about it now. And Wisdom Tree and Deutsche are already in this market. Can you talk about the competitive environment? Is there a land grab going on where each one of you has to get another country to launch in a hedged and an unhedged ETF vehicle? Well, there is a lot of demand in the space, but I think it's important you know, for investors to have a lot of choices and choices to be able to choose where and how they become hedged in their investments. And that's why we decided to launch 11 new products and so many more country funds like Italy, Spain, um, Australia. And these are countries that are going to be important in terms of currency hedging because of their commodities or export-based uh, economies. So how should an individual investor utilize these hedged currency ETFs? Should they have some of their holdings hedged and some unhedged? Is that how it should work? Well, we definitely see uh, individual investors as well as institutions blending their currency hedged portfolio pieces. But at the same time, there's three considerations that investors need to look at. And that's really the time horizon, you know, whether or not they're looking at a short term tactical one to five to maybe 15 years on the longer term. Um, and then also take a look at their, you know, their view on the currency. You know, how strong do you think the dollar is going to be relative to the euro or to Japan? Um, and then last but not least, what is the cost of hedging? Uh, in developed markets, it's a little bit cheaper than emerging markets. And you've got to look at all of these considerations when deciding whether or not you want to go fully hedged, fully unhedged, or some, somewhere in between. And then finally, talk about frontier markets, and in particular, the Middle East. People are talking about Saudi Arabia opening up for equity investing. So what are you going to be doing there? Yeah, well, Saudi Arabia just opened up its market to institutional investors in middle of June, and we'll be launching a fund there. The, the market's been up about 21%, and you know we still expect GDP growth to be very, very strong. So it's an area that we feel there's a lot of demand in, and we already have a range of products in this from UAE, Qatar, Turkey, and Israel. So we'll have the most comprehensive set after this launch. All right, thanks a lot, Jane. Thank you. And thank you for watching The Street.